Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at momentum equation in differential form. In part 1 of our course, you have looked at the momentum equation in integral form and in the previous lesson, you have also looked at the continuity equation in differential form. So now is the time to derive the momentum equation in differential form. And when we talk about momentum, there is no denying that it has a relationship with force. So basically any change in momentum divided by the change in time is equal to force. And we all know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And if you have a fluid element that looks something like this in three dimension. Okay, and if we define the length here as dx and the length here as dy and the length here as dz. How do I find the mass for this particular element? So my mass here would be density times volume. Okay, so density is density and my volume now is dx, dy, dz. Okay, so that is your mass in this equation of f equal to ma. Right, so now let's take a look at what is f. Okay, and in order to do so, we need to represent this cube as a two dimension surface, right? So let's draw that and this will be my surface. Okay, and the length of the edges remains the same. So this is still dx and this is still dy. So dz is not included here. We're going to add them later. So what are the forces that is acting on this surface? For fluid element, the force that are usually there is normal force and also shear force. And of course, if you have another external force, for example, gravity force or electromagnetic force, this will be added later. But the forces that is inside that fluid is usually normal force and also shear force. And because we know the dimension of this element, which is dx times dy times dz, and whenever you have area, you can convert force to stresses, isn't it? And we're gonna call this stress as normal stress and also shear stress. And we're gonna use sigma and we're gonna call it shear stress. And we're gonna use tau. And normal stress acts in this manner, right? So normal stress acts in that direction, okay? It's gonna be normal to the surface of this element. And I'm going to label this as sigma xx. This is sigma yy, sigma xx, and again, sigma yy. These are my normal stresses, okay? And for shear stress, let me use different color. So let's use blue. And this is our shear stress. Okay, it acts in that direction. Okay, and I'm going to label this as tau yx. And this is tau xy. This is tau yx. And this is tau xy. Now, how do I know what to call? xy or yx? Now, let's say that if I write it in this manner. So tau y x what does y in front here means okay so the first subscript is referring to the axis that is normal to the surface which the shear force is acting on for example if i take this surface right and the shear force is acting on that surface and that surface is perpendicular to the y axis so our first subscript going to be y right and what is x here X is referring to the direction of that shear stress. And if you look here, the shear stress is acting in this direction. So it acts on X direction. Okay, so the second subscript will be X. Okay, so that is how I know how to label this either tau YX or tau XY. Now let's take a look at this label, which is sigma XX. And sigma xx exists on this surface. And if you look closely, that surface is perpendicular to x axis. So our first subscript should be x. And look at the direction. Okay, The direction of this stress is 
in x axis that's why we have our second x here so if you want to label that normal force it's going to be sigma xx similarly here will be sigma yy so i hope now you are clear how to label this shear and normal stresses now i told you before that the force and the stress is related with the area if we know the area then we can convert force to stress or stress to forces now let's take a look at the forces acting on this element because our original equation here has force so let's draw another element okay it's basically the same element but now we're going to label all the forces that is acting on this element Okay, let me label this length as dx and dy, right? Because we are going to be referring to the area later. Now, let's take a look at our first normal stress. Okay, now let's take a look at our sigma xx. So it should be here. So this will be sigma xx. And we want to multiply this with area so that we get force. So this will be sigma xx times dy times dz. Okay, now our second normal stress is sigma yy. So this will be sigma yy times dx times dz. Remember, we want to convert all these stresses into forces so that we can fit this into our original F equal to ma equation. Right, now what happens to sigma xx here? Okay, remember you have sigma xx over there. But Using the similar concept that you learn in the differential form for continuity equation, we now know that if the parameter is moving from one side to the other side of the element, it will change slightly. And that depends on the direction that it is moving. For example, now this sigma xx is now moved in x direction. So what happens here, it slightly increased to sigma xx plus del sigma xx over del x times dx. This is the change that happens to sigma xx in x direction. So this is our new stress, okay? Then this stress need to be multiplied with the area so that we can get the force, isn't it? Okay, so this is still dy times dz. Right, and we have another normal force here, and this will be sigma yy times now it has moved in y direction so this will be del sigma yy over del y times dy and our area is dx times dz exactly the similar principle that you learned before in continuity equation it's just that the equation got a little bit longer now now let's take a look at our shear forces right let's change the pen to blue and now our first shear force is here, tau yx, this direction. So this will be tau yx and it acts on this surface. So the area will be dx times dz. Our second shear force is tau xy. So here is tau xy. And the surface is dy dz. Now we have obtained two shear forces. We have another two coming. Okay, so in this direction, this is still our tau yx, but what happens is it has moved in y direction. So this will be plus del tau yx over del y times dy, and the area will be dx dz. And I believe we have another one shear stress that is in this direction. So now this will be tau xy, plus del tau xy over del x dx dy dz okay and i think we have completed the labeling process for our forces and i believe now that you know what to do which is to sum this up in x and y direction respectively so our original equation is f equal to ma correct so let's write that again. So this is F equal to MA. And now you have all the forces that you have that is acting on this element. And you also have the mass. And mass is rho times dx dy dz.
So what will be your acceleration? Acceleration is simply the change in velocity divided by the change in t. And we are going to be using acceleration equal to capital D u over dt. And this is acceleration in x direction. And if I want acceleration in y direction, this will be dv over dt. And let me remind you, d over dt is called the substantial derivative. And this represents equal to del over del t plus u del over del x plus v del over del y plus w del over del z. So this is why we use capital DU over capital DT. In a way, we want to simplify this equation so we can understand it easier. Now to sum this up, let's take a look at force in X direction. Okay, so F equal to MA, MA in X direction, right? So force in X direction is this one, and then this term, and then this term and also this term. Let's write it. So, sigma xx plus del sigma xx over del x dx and this is times dy dz minus sigma xx dy dz plus this term here, which is tau yx plus del tau yx over del y times dy. And this will be multiplied with dx dz minus one more term here, that is tau yx dx dz. And this is equal to mass time acceleration. And our mass is rho times dx dy dz. So rho times dx dy dz. And that is your mass. So what is your acceleration? Because f equal to ma. Now we are missing a. And acceleration in x direction is simply du over dt. u over dt. Okay. So... I think now we can cancel out a few terms. For example, sigma xx times dy dz can be cancelled out here. And also tau yx dx dz can also be cancelled out. And the remaining term, you can cancel out with dx dy dz. Okay, and what you are left with is actually del sigma xx over del x plus del tau yx over del y equal to rho times du over dt. And this will be for x direction. Now, let's take a look at what happens in y direction. So, y direction. And this will be f in y direction equal to mass times acceleration in y direction. So, let's take a look at this element here and what is involved in y direction. So you have here one term, two term, three term, and four term. Now let's start with this term. Okay, so that will be sigma yy plus del sigma yy over, I think over del y, isn't it? Okay, so over del y times dy, and this is multiplied with dx dz. Okay, what is our second term? Second terms is, let's use this term. Okay, so that is tau xy plus tau xy plus del tau xy. I believe this is over del x. Okay, so this is over del x times dx multiplied with dy dz. And what is our next term is this one. So minus sigma yy dx dz. And then finally, we have this term minus tau xy times dy dz. Let me check again. So tau xy dy dz, that's correct. Equal to mass time acceleration. Mass is rho 
times dx, dy, dz. And acceleration in y direction is here, which is dv over dt. dv over dt. And similarly, I think we can cancel out a few terms if we can find it. So sigma yy times dx dz is similar here. And then you have tau xy dy dz is similar here. And what's remaining, you can cancel out dx dy dz. And you are going to be left with del sigma yy over del y plus del tau xy over del x equal to rho dv over dt. And this is your f equal to ma equation in y direction. This means that if you have two dimensional element, you already have a complete equation for the momentum equation in differential form. However, quite often we are dealing with three dimensional problem. So what happens if you have the z direction that is inside this equation. So let me write you the complete equation with z direction as well. For the momentum equation in x direction, what you have is, so momentum equation, for x direction, what you have is quite similar with this one, but with additional z direction. So this is del sigma xx over del x plus del tau yx over del y plus del tau zx over del z. And this is equal to rho du over dt. Alright, in y direction, the equation becomes del tau xy over del x plus del sigma yy over del y plus del tau zy over del z equal to rho dv over dt. And in z direction, what you will have is del tau xz over del x plus del tau yz over del y plus del sigma z z over del z and this is equal to rho dw over dt. And by arranging this equation in this way, I hope you can see a little bit of a trend of xy, yx, zx, zy and how it is arranged in such a manner that completes the momentum equation in x direction, y direction and z direction. And if you can see here, the arrangement is such that when you have x here, it's always x on this side, right? And then you go x, y and z, right? And in the middle you have here y, y and y and then you go x y and z and similarly at the end you have z z and z and finally you have x y and z so that is a trick for me to remember the arrangement of the momentum equation because if i have to derive this every time i need to solve a problem that is related with momentum equation it's going to take all day so let me clean this up for you So this is the momentum equation that we look for. Okay. However, this equation is not usable yet. We need to reduce this equation further so it becomes what we call the Navier-Stokes equation. But we will do that in the next lesson. So try and do this again and again starting from this cube over here. Okay, starting from this cube over here and then try to derive our momentum equation in x, y and z direction. That is all from me for now and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!